Welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. This time around, uh, we're going to pull a lot of different videos together into one and talk about how to configure a Brocade ICX switch with Cisco phones using CDP. So in the past, I've done videos on rapid spanning tree and VLANs and dual mode and LDP and FTP, um, yeah, PoE, um, so several different things. In this video, we're going to pull it all together uh, and show you how to configure, um, you know, your switch for the the optimal way to do uh, Cisco phones. And then there's there is a second video with a generic phone. So if you don't have Cisco's or you don't have a phone that runs CDP, there'll be a second video with LLDP and how to set those parameters for a Shortel, a Mitel, um, pretty much any other phone. So let's have a look. So uh, we're on our switch here, 7250 as usual. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is out of most phones, you have two ports. You have a port that comes in from the switch, which is, carries your tag voice traffic. And then you're going to have a second port, which is going to be connected to a PC. You don't have to do that, but that's the way it's deployed in most cases. So we need two VLANs going to that phone. One is going to be uh, tag traffic for voice and one's going to be untagged. So in this case, I'm going to uh, go into config T. I'm going to create a VLAN 10. I uh, give it a name, which is our data VLAN, right? And then we're going to tag Ethernet 1 slash 1 slash 1 to 1 slash 1 slash 5, let's say, okay? Uh, then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on rapid spanning tree. So this is important. Regular spanning tree 802.1D um, will run fast span. So it'll put a port into forwarding in two seconds or less, provided it meets various uh, parameters. And one of those parameters is it can't have um, tag VLANs on it, right? It can't learn more than one MAC address or else it resorts back to the uh, 30 seconds of listening, learning, forwarding, uh, and that is too long for a phone. So um, rapid spanning tree doesn't have those limitations. The worst case scenario in rapid spanning tree or H2.1W is two seconds, and that's only if the root bridge fails. If any other bridge fails, it's, a, it's less than a second to fail over or put a port into forwarding. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this port into rapid spanning tree. So spanning dash, or this VLAN, I should say, spanning dash tree 802-1W. Okay, so we've turned on rapid spanning tree. Um, then I'm, I'm also going to tag an uplink port, uh, tag E1 slash 2 slash 1. So that's going to be our uplink. Okay, then we're going to create a second VLAN, VLAN 20, name voice. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to tag E... 1 slash 1 slash 1 to 1 slash 1 slash 5 uh, and then turn on uh, span 802-1w and then lastly we're going to tag our uplink for the same thing 1 slash 2 slash 1 okay so we've got our two VLANs created now you're you if you haven't watched the dual mode uh, video then you're probably wondering why I tagged both VLANs when I just said I was only going to tag the voice traffic and untag the PC traffic well we're gonna get to that in a minute we're gonna turn on dual mode on the interfaces and that will and the, the number that follows the dual mode command will be the untagged VLAN okay so the other things we're gonna do we're gonna turn on um, CDP, because this is a Cisco phone in particular in this video, we need to send and receive CDP packets. So we're going to turn on CDP, and in order to turn on CDP, we also need to turn on FTP. So we're going to do an FTP run, Foundry Discovery Protocol run. We're going to do a CDP run. And lastly, we're going to do an LLDP run, just because LLDP is much more robust and it's going to show us the settings uh, of the phone that CDP won't. So we'll get there. So we're going to turn on all three of those discovery protocols. Then uh, we need to configure the interfaces. So we're going to go interface E, 1 slash 1 slash 1. We'll do uh, all five ports at the same time, 1 slash 1 slash 5, right? So this puts us in a mode where we configure five ports, right? Um, so multiple interface, 111 to 115. So then uh, we're going to do a uh, – so first we need to worry about that the data VLAN. So we're going to say dual mode and then the number here is 10. So that means I'm going to send 
VLAN tends traffic out dual uh, out untagged out of that interface and everything else that's not following the dual mode command is going to go out tagged. So there, there is only one other VLAN, but there could be as many as you want, but there can only be one untagged. So that takes care of that. Um, then we're going to do a uh, span tree. We want to we want to do um, 802-1W and then we we have to do admin edge port. So admin edge port just says that this is an edge port, not an uplink between between switches. And so we don't want um, other reconvergences to affect this port or this port going up and down to cause reconvergence on the uplinks. So we're going to do um, an admin edge port. OK, so that's good. Um, so then we're going to do inline power. So we are turning on PoE. So we can turn on PoE in multiple ways, right? So if I just do an inline power, it's going to come up in the default, which is um, it's going to be a, a maximum that port can handle, right? So it's going to allocate uh, 30 watts of power for that port uh, in this particular case. You can set a maximum. You can set a maximum power class. In this case, I'm just going to turn it on and let it allocate all, all the power it needs onto that port. So I've done that, and then it says PoE power is enabled on the port. Um, okay, and and it's only showing that port because there is a PoE device plugged into that port, but there is not into the other uh, f uh, four ports in that in that port group. So if there was other ports, then you would see them power up as well. Um, then we're going to do a voice VLAN command. So let me get back to my prompt here. So what voice VLAN does is it sends a CDP packet to that device to tell it what uh, VLAN it's supposed to be on. So if there's a Cisco phone out there, it'll send a CDP packet and say um, whatever number I'm going to follow it with. So I'm going to say 20 it's going to tell that device at the other end to configure itself for VLAN 20 and send its voice traffic on that on that VLAN. So we're going to do that, voice VLAN 20. Um, and then lastly, uh, uh, it depends. Actually, there's two other things. One is if you want to run layer 2 class of service, so 802.1p, that is on by default. So from a QoS perspective, there's nothing you need to do if you want to run layer 2. If you want to run diff serve or DSCP, you just have to tell it to trust DSCP. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this case. We're going to do a trust, uh, and that just depends on your environment, how you want to run it. So we're going to tell it to trust DSCP. So don't trust class of service, which is the default. We're going to tell it to trust DSCP. So the only other parameter that you may want to run as a best practice is because we're running um, per VLAN spanning tree. So I turned on I turned on uh, rapid spanning tree on the VLANs. So we're running per VLAN spanning tree. The problem with phones comes in where let's say somebody there was two ports coming out of a, a wall or a cubicle and they plugged one port into each of the ports on the phone. So basically they created a loop through that phone. Per VLAN spanning tree would not catch that loop because those BPDUs are sent in different VLANs and they won't see each other, right? So in order to stop that from happening, we can do a, a loop detection on the port just with a loop detection command and then it will send out loop detect uh, uh, protocol packets and listen for them coming back on another port in the in the on the device. So that is a way to protect yourself against um, uh, someone you know plugging that in. And if you think that can't happen, I've seen it happen in production networks many many times where someone has you know plugged uh, a, a, a cable into more than one port on an IP phone and caused a loop to the network. So that will that uh, turning on loop detect will uh, stop loop detect uh, stop those loops from happening. Okay, so first things first, let's look at our finished configuration here. So we have our two VLANs that we've created, right? VLAN 10 is data, uh, port 1 to 5, and then our uplink. Um, and then uh, 1 to 5 on voice and our uplink, we turn on rapid spanning tree on both of those. We've turned on CDP run, LDP run, uh, CDP and FDP run. And then on the ports here, loop detect, dual mode 10, so untagged uh, traffic goes out VLAN 10. Um, 
we've got spanning tree here uh, so it's a min edge port on spanning tree we've turned on inline power we told the device that it should be send its voice traffic on vlan 20 and we've told it to trust layer 3 qos or diff serve or dscp okay and then lastly so we see that on all the ports and then we see ldp run here um, one thing that i didn't do so i should actually for best practice go into my interface 1 slash 2 slash 1 and do a span 802-1w admin uh, and we're, we're going to do a point to point Mac. And so again, there's a rapid span tree video on this, but this will, um, this says I'm talking to another rapid spanning tree bridge at the other side. So fail over and fail back in two seconds or less. Don't, uh, don't assume that there's a hub in the middle and don't go through listening, learning, forwarding. Okay, so that's it for that configuration. So um, you can't see it, but I can see the Cisco phone beside me has powered up, so I know that there's inline power. So let's let's uh, look at the show command. So show inline power shows us on port 111, admin state is on. So admin state, we turned it on for all these ports. Operational state, so only one of the ports has a phone plugged in. So this one is, is operational state on. It's consuming 3.8 watts, but we've allocated 6.3 watts. Um, it's an 802.3 AF device, and it's a class 2. So the device has, has given us that information. So we can see that that's powered up. So that's great. Um, so then if we do a show FDP neighbor, I can see that um, on port 111, there is a Cisco IP phone, port 1 of the IP phone, um, and here's its device ID. We also see on 121 on my uplink port, I see another 7250-24P uh, connected to its port 1 slash 2 slash 1. Okay, so uh, the asterisk here indicates that it's a CDP device, right? So if there's no asterisk, it's, 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 um, it's native FTP or foundry discovery protocol. The asterisk says that this is a Cisco device, so I know right away it's sending us FTP. Um, so then we can do a show um, show FTP neighbor uh, detail, right? So then we see, um, so here's our first device. So this is our Cisco phone right here. So here's this device ID. It's a Cisco uh, 7961. Uh, its capability is a host. So it's not a switch or a router. It's actually a host device. My interface 1111 is connected to its port 1. Um, then we can see um, uh, very little else actually. So it, it doesn't tell us a lot about itself. Uh, and then we see my 7250 here, which we get a little bit more information. So um, really, this is a way to program them and it's fine, but LLDP is a, or LLDP med in this case, is a much more robust protocol. So we can get much more information. So let's see what uh, show LLDP tells us. So show LDP neighbor is going to show us our generic neighbor, right? So uh, I can also see the 7250 beside me is not uh, running LDP, so it, it has not shown up. But here's my Cisco phone, right? Now, the real benefit comes in if I do a show, show LDP neighbor detail. So here's information, very detailed information about this neighbor, right? So on my 1111, here's this port ID. Um, we can see it's a Cisco phone. Uh, we can see that it's a bridge and telephone. It's set to auto negotiate. Um, what else can we see? So it's a it's an endpoint class three for LLDP. It's voice. Um, so there's several different application types. And under if you look uh, in an in my LLDP video or in the um, configuring IP phones video. Um, you'll see how to set these parameters, but there's there's several different application types that you can set under LLDP. So if it's sending voice traffic, you can do one thing with it. If it's sending voice signaling, if it's sending, um, you know, there's there's many other different types of applications where you can set the parameters for it with different um, different VLAN IDs, different uh, QoS priorities, etc. But anyway, so we see the voice traffic here. Um, it's on VLAN 20 and we set that right so when we set the voice VLAN command it sent a CDP packet to tell that that phone what VLAN it was going to be on and so that's where it got this voice from right 
um, its class of service priority is five, its DSCP value is 46. So that's what the phone is sending us, right? And then voice signaling, same thing. It's tag traffic, VLAN 20, um, it's coming out best effort. So it's not actually sending um, by default, it's not, it's not prioritizing that traffic. Uh, and then uh, we can see some, some um, uh, power information, right? So it's a PD device. We can see that it's, it's uh, 6.3 watts or, or um, 6,597 milliwatts. And then a little bit more information. So as you can see, you get far, far more information about from LDP than you get from CDP. And there's nothing wrong with CDP, but we can do far, far more with LDP. And it doesn't have to be a phone with LDP either. It could be a storage array. It could be a server. It could be VMware. It could be anything. Um, so it's not limited to, to just devices that support CDP because LDP and LDP med are an open protocol. Um, so uh, if you, it, Almost all Cisco phones, except maybe some, some very old legacy ones, support either CDP or LDP. Um, some people still prefer to use the voice VLAN command and use CDP, but you know, going forward, LDP probably makes more sense and it will apply to any phone vendor. So, you know, Mitel, Shortel, you know, if you've got Nortels out there, you know, uh, Cisco's in most cases. So it just makes more sense. Anyway, um, so that is it. That's a, that's a working configuration. Um, if we wanted to go in, so for example, if I wanted to go in and go to interface E111, I could change that voice VLAN to something else. So let's say I change my voice VLAN to 10, um, which wouldn't make sense because I'm sending untagged traffic out to that. But the next time that that um, LTP information updates, uh, so it still says that it's 20, but, uh, you know, every every uh, 30 seconds it sends out a query. So that should change in 30 to 60 seconds, and we should actually see that voice VLAN update to, to VLAN 10. Um, but anyway, so we're not going to wait for that, but, um, but that is exactly how you do it for Cisco phones running CDP. But uh, I would suggest that you tune into the generic IP phone video for information on how to set many more parameters using LLDP than we can with CDP. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for joining.